Hey everybody, I wanted to take some time and talk to you today about the side effects of cancer treatment. I'm just going to touch on some of the most common. You know, we are all too familiar with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, um, and weight loss from chemotherapy, but one of the things that is uh, unknown to most fitness professionals and probably to cancer patients as well is that the chemotherapy can cause a long-term risk for osteoporosis, diabetes, and damage to the heart and lungs. So as fitness professionals, what that means is that we have to make sure, um, as far as osteoporosis goes, of course, to include some weight-bearing exercise into our client's program. Um, and also with the damage to the heart and lungs, they need to be doing cardiovascular exercise to strengthen the heart and lungs, and the cardiovascular exercise will also help them prevent diabetes. That, of course, with um, a good healthy diet, which they should see a registered dietitian for, someone who specializes in working with cancer patients. So when you get somebody um, who says that they've gone through chemotherapy, realize that those things are all potential long-term side Side effects for them um, you know it's much more complicated that and while they're undergoing chemotherapy their immune system is compromised so it's really important to make sure there is uh, really good hygiene everything is is you know cleaned down with antiseptic or antibacterial wipes that they don't share exercise mats that they use their own or they put a clean towel down on top even down to drinking out of a water fountain they should have their own water bottle and if you are sick um, as a trainer, uh, you should not be around your client during that time. And if you're a cancer patient and your immune system's compro compromised, it's so important that you keep yourself safe and not go out into public places where there's a lot of germs and bacteria. And that may include going to a gym. Now with radiation, particularly with external beam radiation, um, if there are burns in a particular area, it's so important to make sure that any exercise that is being done is not causing any more discomfort or pain, so you don't want to apply any pressure either with machines or having a client lie in prone position or have you lay on your stomach. And that, that goes with anything, not just cancer treatment, but if there are surgical incisions, that also has to be taken into consideration. Uh, another thing with external beam radiation is anywhere that you slash your client has received radiation, you are at risk for lymphedema, and that is the swelling of that area due to damage to uh, the lymph vessels or the lymph nodes, which can actually cause a backup of lymphatic fluid. So it's um, key that you do exercises that will help to open up the lymphatic pathways before and after exercising, and also to start and progress slowly. So while we know that you need to do weight-bearing exercise to prevent osteoporosis, we also have to do it very incrementally because if you add too much weight too fast that can actually spur on lymphedema um, same thing with doing too much cardio it start with five minutes and gradually add a minute two minutes three minutes so on and so forth and I can't emphasize that enough um, lastly uh, hormonal therapy I'm going to touch on that hormonal therapy uh, with women will of course in many many cases put them in instant menopause the younger a woman is the greater the likelihood she is of resuming her menses um, but in the case that somebody is close to menopause they will probably not regain their menstrual cycle and therefore uh, they also will be at risk for osteoporosis and needing to do weight-bearing exercise to increase their bone density but they will also have a likelihood of gaining body fat uh, unfortunately that happens to most women as they go into menopause and that adipose tissue um, the, the fatty tissue that they may add to can also increase the risk of lymphedema as it tends to retain fluid and interfere with the flow of lymphatic fluid. With men who have hormone therapy, they have something very similar to menopause and they'll get the hot flashes and the night sweats and what have you, but they can get gynecomastia and the increased breast 
tenderness and growth and they also have the likelihood of muscle loss over prolonged period periods of time now it'll be difficult to build muscle for them particularly if they're undergoing testosterone ablation so they're blocking or stopping the production altogether of testosterone but nonetheless weight bearing exercise should be part of their program and the same thing applies if they are at risk for lymphedema for you know they've either had radiation or had lymph nodes removed then you will also want to start and progress slowly so this is just a teeny bit of information in terms of cancer treatment i'm going to start dropping more information through social media for you guys uh, to gather and hopefully apply with your clients and then if you are interested in becoming a cancer exercise specialist there is so much more to learn and um, you can visit our website for lots of free information and then also information on the courses and that is the cancer specialist singular dot com and you can also write me personally at CETI so it's the acronym for Cancer Exercise Training Institute CETI guru g-u-r-u at gmail.com I hope you guys have a great weekend